a large group of well-intentioned people have come to the Driver Rehabilitation Center to see which of them can be saved and who amongst them is a total wreck. The first nominee, ah! Margarita, was brought to rehab by Cheryl, her best friend and business partner, because... I've caused about $300,000 worth of damage to other cars and my car. Originally from Cuba, but now living in Toronto, Robert was brought to rehab by his friend, Socrates, because Robert drives so slow, he once got a ticket for it. Everyone is passing me because uh, they are stupid. Albertan speed freak, <laughs> Azim, was brought to rehab by Ray, his worried friend, because Driving makes Azim so tense, his hair is falling out. It's called alopecia. It's caused by stress. The next Canada's Worst Driver nominee is Diane, who was brought to rehab by Stefan, her husband, because Diane's only driven 30 kilometers in the last three years. I just want to cry. British Columbian teenager, Klein was brought to rehab by Maureen, his terrified mother, because in less than two years, Klein's had 10 accidents. Watch this guy. Idiots. Vancouverite Dallas ah! was nominated by her sister, Jean, because Dallas cries almost every time she drives. I just get nervous. I don't want to do this anymore. Speaking of nervous drivers, Edmontonian Flora was brought to rehab by her husband Frank because Flora's too intimidated to steer. Where are you going? You follow the lane. And finally, British Columbian Kevin was brought to rehab by his boyfriend, Lenny, because Kevin has a lot of driving issues, including a right eye made of glass. So, if any one of those eight people lives anywhere near you, I might consider never walking across the street again. One of them is Canada's worst driver. This year, the Driver Rehabilitation Center has four experts on hand. Our high-speed driving expert is Philippe Letourneau. Our legal driving expert is former police sergeant Cam Woolley. To keep everyone's mental health in check, Shamala Kiru is back. And the fresh face this year is Tim Danter, our new general driving instructor. Hey, Tim, how's it going? Excellent, how about you? Good, good. Today, Tim is teaching the bad drivers how to properly reverse. I have to go like this. You got it. The key to proper reversing is putting your arm around the passenger seat, placing your hand on top of the steering wheel, and looking back through the rear window. Excellent. Learn something? Yeah, definitely. Now that everyone knows how to sit properly to reverse, it's time for a reversing challenge. And to make sure that Canada's worst drivers can wrap their head around sitting properly in any vehicle, we're making them do the challenge in a British car, which has the driver's seat on the opposite side. 
And just to keep things interesting, they'll be competing two at a time in head-to-head -head matchups. The course is simple. Drivers will reverse in a straight line from the starting area to this area. There, they must turn around and then reverse back to the beginning again. First up is Margarita versus Kevin. It takes no time at all for Kevin to notice what in the? That the car he's using is a right-hand drive vehicle. But for Margarita, it takes a while before she realizes there's no steering wheel on the left-hand side of the car. Oh! <laughs> oh my god! When the drivers are told to go, go! Margarita isn't in gear. Reverse, reverse! Oh. Kevin's in gear. But he isn't looking out the back window like he was just taught. Oh. Do it okay. you. Okay. Margarita also isn't looking where she was taught to look. I taught Margarita to look out the center of the rear window, and that is clearly what she's not doing now. Even so, Margarita's passing Kevin. Oh no, you don't. Oh, he's gonna go right. Ah! Oh, you almost get. Oh. Holy hell! Did she just hit me? Margarita gets going again, but. You're going into his lane. Uh oh. While Margarita continues running over the communal lane markers, Kevin is plowing the barrier she knocked into his path earlier. What am I pushing? You're pushing the barriers. Oh, While Kevin basically remodels our course, Margarita blasts through the end of our turnaround zone. Oh my god. And Kevin... Oh my god. ...is also blasting through his lane markers. Like you've destroyed half the course. Pushing styrofoam cubes around is no big deal. But when Kevin starts knocking over rims... This guy's crazy! He gets himself wedged on one. We're stuck. Kevin... will go no further. Margarita is still going, but... Oh, he said to look here. Yeah, okay. She's still not looking through the rear window. Stop, 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 stop! Yeah. Margarita did not do what she learned. I didn't really look behind me much. When we come back... They're a little off-roading over there. The rest of Canada's worst drivers try to make their way through our simple reversing course. What? Canada's worst drivers have learned how to properly reverse by looking through the middle of their back window. How was that? Oh, I felt good. Now, they're reversing against one another in right-hand drive vehicles. Up next is Klein versus Robert. Klein starts reversing exactly how he was taught by looking out the back window. Slow. Robert, on the other hand, hit the gas. is staring only at the mirror on his door. What? Maybe Robert didn't learn quite enough. While Klein heads for the finish line, Robert gets stuck on a rim. I can't. Robert has finally learned today's lesson. You know why you hit those rims? Because I didn't look at the meter. Meanwhile, Klein finishes his drive perfectly. Good job. Klein seems good at reversing. You did great. I know. <laughs> Azim is a very short man. 
And when he had his reversing lesson, he told Tim... The reason I hate backing up is because I don't see behind me. Okay. A booster seat is the solution to that problem. That is, that is, it's a huge difference. Now that Azim can see where he's going, it's time for Azim to compete against Flora in our reversing challenge. With a clear view of where he's going, Azim makes it quickly to the turnaround area. Yeah, I'm gonna try to impress myself. Flora's impressing me. Her run is clean too. But as Azim struggles to turn around, Flora's perfect run comes crashing down. They're a little off-roading over there. Flora's off-roading leads to on-rimming. And once she's got herself balanced on a rim, she's unable to move. Flora still has hope. I might be the kind of that's worst driver right now, but after all the finish, all the program, I think I won't be. In the turnaround area, Oh, Azim is deteriorating. How are we on grass right now? I know, I don't know. I don't know, Ray. Azim's reversing still needs a boost. I mean, I don't know about this cushion, but I'll have a love and hate relationship with it. The final reversing matchup is Diane versus Dallas. Instead of looking out her rear window. Well, I'm just following this side. Oof. Dallas focuses only on the driver's side. She is not doing what I taught her. She is relying on the mirrors 100%. Ah! Using the correct technique, Diane is almost at the turnaround zone. Finally, someone who's doing what you told him to do. It's nice to see. As Diane heads for the finish. It's styrofoam, it's styrofoam. She's going faster than she can control. How the f did I do that? Diane did that challenge by hitting 21 obstacles. Did I knock anything? Dallas is also knocking things because she's not looking where Tim taught her to. Oh, I suck. Dallas needs to drive the way we teach her. If I had another chance, I'd probably do it without hitting anything. Do you know where your wheels are? I said, do you know where your wheels are? And what I really mean by that is, do you know that when you're going around a turn, your rear wheels do not follow your front wheels? Knowing where your wheels are is an extremely important part of driving, because let's face it, if you don't know where your wheels are, you don't know where you are. Where am I? And how do I get out of here anyways? Anyone? Help! Canada's worst drivers don't know where their wheels go when their car is cornering. So, Philippe Letourneau is about to teach a lesson. The goal of this is to try to get you to understand a bit more about where your wheels are, so. So everyone can track the progress of the wheels on this car, we're putting paint on the tires. As Philippe drives forward, the four wheels create just two tracks. But as he turns the vehicle, four separate tracks are left behind. Which tire do you think that is? The first one there. That will be the front. Front? Yeah. Am I wrong? She's wrong. Here's what happens. When a car makes a turn, the rear will always cut sharper than the front, which is what Philippe just demonstrated. And a lot of people forget about that. This is why there's a lot of scratches in indoor parking, for example. To see if Canada's worst drivers learned this lesson, 
It's time for our Know Where Your Wheels Are challenge that we call the trough. Because the course is a concrete trough. Canada's worst drivers must navigate their way from one end of the trough to the other without the wheels of this Suzuki sidekick falling over the edge. This course is all about knowing where your wheels are and it starts off straight and so I know that when I go straight my wheels will follow each other so get on there. That's what I'm gonna do. The first sharp turn is to the right. Before I make that turn I have to get on the left side of the trough. I actually want to crawl all the way up there basically. I want to be far to the left because when I turn right my rear wheels will cut sharper around the corner than the front wheels. And if they were any farther to the right than this, I'd come off the trough. Now I'm going to hit onto these wooden pieces. Oh! Crossing the bridge, my wheels aren't quite where I want them to be. I want them to be farther to the left because my next turn is once again to the right. Now, am I going to make this? I want to keep going until my very last possible second to turn. Now, turn it hard now that I'm here. As before, when I turn right, my rear wheels take the corner so much sharper, I almost pop off. But I don't, because I know where my wheels are. And you should too. Do Canada's worst drivers know where their wheels are? We're about to find out. Azim attacks this course by correctly going around the first turn. Oh my god. And getting correctly onto the bridge. I'm actually having a lot of fun right now. But getting off the bridge. Oh. Azim stays too far to his right. And on the final turn. Oh. He's not quite wide enough. Whenever Azim makes a mistake, his stress levels rise. Oh. Oh. Off. And when Azim's stress levels rise, oh. Oh. Did I get up? his driving gets worse. Oh. And when Azim's driving gets worse, his stress levels rise. <laughs> And that makes his driving worse. Oh, f Azim knows why he failed this challenge. It's not even the wheel placement, really. In my opinion, it's all in here, man. It's all in there. When we come back, the rest of Canada's worst drivers learn where their wheels are. Do you know where your wheels are, Flora? I know he's under the car. On Diane's first day in rehab, she told me... I don't know where my wheels are. Then yesterday she told Tim... Uh, I don't know where my wheels are. Then today, everybody had a know where your wheels are lesson with Philippe the rear will always cut sharper than the front. Now on our annual trough course, we'll find out if Diane knows where her wheels are. I gotta go straight, yeah, we'll take a keep... wide turn. Apparently, Diane does know where her wheels are. She takes the first turn wide, then she crosses the bridge, then she takes the last turn super wide. Just a few meters from making it to the finish line, Diane gets stuck. Don't panic. Okay. So close. This is. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Oh. That's it. You made it. <laughs> the, the, the most elegant wait, but you made it. Diane knows where her wheels are. When it was over, I felt good. Robert gets off to a bad start. 
Oh, no. Robert does get progressively better. It seems like Robert is starting to get it, but slowly. After 30 minutes of trying, though, <sighs> Robert never does succeed. I think I did very bad. I sucked. Flora didn't learn the lesson. Which way your rear wheel is going to go? To the inside of the turn or the outside? Outside. Inside. Inside the car. A little bit left. A little bit left. Frank takes over. Okay, stop. Stop. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Frank's back to his controlling behavior. Fine. Stop. Stop. I'm just curious as to how much Flores did making the decisions and how much you were. Uh, it's almost all mine. So the idea is that Flora's going to come and learn how to drive. Because if we tell her to turn left and then turn right and then turn left and then turn right, she's not going to learn as much as if she actually drives. Yes. Without Frank's help, Flora falls off the course. Oh, gosh. But that's OK. Because she's finally learning. You hop on out and we'll uh, move the car for you. Drivers have half an hour to complete this course by making as many attempts as they like. But as soon as Flora starts her second attempt... Head stop. Okay. Frank starts taking over again. Now. Right now. Okay, good. No! Bad! Wow, shoot. <laughs> Flora makes four attempts. And Frank gives orders every time. I know he's trying to help, but it doesn't help really. Klein doesn't know where his wheels are. Oh! Time after time, oh! Come on! Klein makes turns that are too tight. Yeah! Oh, man. Klein says he knows how to do this challenge. Then do it! Eventually, he does do it because... Okay, what? Tell me when to turn. Turn, turn. Now turn? He follows the advice of his mother. Go that way a little bit and then turn. Don't turn too tight. There you go. Oh, wow, I did it. <laughs> Yay. Klein's mother knows where his wheels are. Uh, she didn't help me at all. I did this all on my own accord. Margarita says she usually bumps into at least one thing every day she drives. Uh oh If Margarita learns where her wheels are, she'll stop bumping into so many things. But... Okay. Margarita has forgotten what she learned in her lesson. <laughs> and Cheryl has forgotten her window is up. When it comes to knowing where your wheels are, Margarita might be Canada's worst driver. Margarita needs to pay more attention in class. I feel like such an idiot. Emotional Dallas has a positive outlook today. This one, I am going to succeed in. But as soon as she gets going, ah! Dallas's emotions get the best of her. Ah! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Okay. No, no, okay. no. I don't want to drive anymore. Dallas does keep driving, but she does not know where her wheels are. Ah! Kevin! is the final driver. When I think about who might be Canada's worst driver... So you're too high. That's it. It's going to go. Oh, I think Kevin might be Canada's worst driver. <sighs> oh. no. In 30 minutes... Whoa. Oh. Kevin makes seven attempts on our trough course. Oh. And... He never makes it past the first turn.
turn. Talk about not knowing where your wheels are. Too much. Kevin is the worst in rehab. You don't know where your wheels are. Obviously, I don't know where my wheels are. When we come back, right. Canada's worst drivers are tested on their shoulder checking ability. One of our drivers this season has a rather large blind spot. In fact, he's blind in one eye. That's kind of like not being able to see half of your vehicle. Can a one-eyed driver properly check his or her blind spot? Can any of Canada's worst drivers properly check his or her blind spot? We're about to find out in our annual, I don't see anything, check your blind spot challenge. Checking your blind spot is obviously important. You never know what could be back there. Our blind spot checking challenge works like this. Drivers will come down this straightaway at 70 kilometers an hour. But in their way will be this stack of boxes that represent a foreboding truck that for some reason has stopped dead right in the middle of the road. When drivers pass, these markers still going 70, they have to look backwards at them by doing a shoulder check into their blind spot. If they look back and see a red sign, the lane on that side is unsafe to turn into. If they shoulder check and see a green sign, that lane is the one they should merge into. It'll all happen very fast, so drivers better not be speeding or they might miss their turn. Oh, and as a twist, if both of these markers are red, the driver must stop completely without changing lanes. I'll show you what I mean in our hot, hot Mustang, which was in much better shape last episode. <laughs> Blind spot challenge. I gotta get the car up to 70 kilometers an hour, check over both shoulders, I go to the lane that's green. If no lane is free, I just have to lock up the brakes. Now, getting up to 70, woohoo, is easy in this machine. Red, red, oh, red both! Woohoo! Man, that's measured within an inch of its life, but it's perfectly doable. Now, let's see if Canada's worst drivers can do it. Yesterday, Canada's worst drivers learned to keep their shoulders against the seat when checking their blind spot. Some folks will do this. That's what I do. We, when we go to check the blind spots, we keep our shoulders against the back of the seat. Oh, so you don't turn with No, ma'am. Nervous Dallas will do the 70K an hour challenge first. By the way, we've made both sides red. On Dallas's first attempt, she is so nervous, ah! she looks at her speedometer, but still speeds up to 85K an hour. And she never checks her right side. I can't see. Let this be a lesson to all long-haired drivers. When you're behind the wheel, never allow your mane to create an even bigger blind spot. I can't see. I didn't even see any colors. I didn't see red or green. OK, go right back to the beginning. We'll do it again. OK. Drivers will each get two chances at this challenge. Every driver's first run will be just like that one, with two red markers. But on their second try, one side will randomly be green. For Dallas's second try, her right side is her green side. And she sees it. Ah! Oh my god. The shoulder check lesson paid off for Dallas. I'm usually really bad at shoulder checks, so. I'm surprised that I did that. Diane is usually timid behind the wheel. But today when she takes off, she's instantly speeding. And when she turns her head, she inadvertently turns the wheel. Right. Uh. 
On her second attempt, 70 kilometers an hour, go to the green side. The lane to Diane's left is green. But once again, she gets going too fast. And when she turns her head, she turns the wheel again. Green! Sorry. The good news is, Diane does realize why she failed. As soon as if I turn my head, my shoulder comes. So I, that I, I, I did realize. Klein is up next. Klein does see the red sign on both sides, but he's going faster than the 70k an hour speed limit. Oh. Oh. You're speeding, my friend. Was I? Yeah, you're over 80. On his second attempt, Klein goes the requested 70. He easily sees the green sign to his right, and he easily makes the lane change. See the difference between speeding and not speeding? Yes. Total success, sir. If Klein drives the speed limit, he could be a good driver. <laughs> Azim loves to fondle his gear stick. And he takes off with only one hand on the wheel. These cars are awesome. His lead foot means he's going too fast to stop, and his one-handed driving means he can't steer to safety. I completely f***ed that up. Ami, complete idiot, I could have stopped. Shoulder checking is usually not an issue for me. I don't understand how I f***ed that up. On his second chance, Azim won't stop fondling his gear stick again. Whenever you're ready, you can go. And that diminishes his steering ability again. Azim fails twice in a row. Adam, I should have gotten it right. When we come back, right. The rest of Canada's worst drivers do our shoulder check challenge. Canada's worst drivers are doing our check your blind spot challenge. I can't see. If drivers see two red signs when they look backwards over both shoulders, they have to stop before running into the cardboard truck in front of them. If they look back and see a green sign, they must change into that lane to avoid the cardboard truck. Flora is next. On her first attempt, Flora correctly goes 70k an hour. But instead of stopping when she sees the two red markers, she swerves around the parked truck. Right, like up. On her second attempt, Flora again goes exactly 70, and this time she checks her blind spots perfectly. Right, green. And she steers perfectly. Stop. Flora was perfect. Frank must be so proud. She is still a bad driver, I can guarantee, but uh, maybe not the worst one. Margarita is next. Got this. Give her. But instead of driving 70k an hour, Margarita speeds up to 92. Whoa. Whoa! Look at that shoulder come off the back of the seat. Yeah. So what happened there? Do you know? Yeah. Well, because I was going so fast, like I was, I felt like I couldn't. I went to a shoulder check, and I, like I, I don't know. And they were you both don't know, do you? And then you look this way behind you, and you went that same way you looked. Go. On her second attempt, Margarita's green lane is the one to her right, but this time she goes too fast again. 
And instead of steering to her right, she goes to her left. Green! Oh, sh Whoa! Oh, Oh, my God, you took off the freaking mirror. Oh, my God, and I even went the wrong way. Margarita is a basic disaster. I think if she did it about 20 more times, she could actually get it. Blind in his right eye, Kevin never checks his right blind spot because... If I'm turning my head, my hands move with the steering wheel, and uh, that's how I wound up in the ditch all those times. Several times you've tried to check your blind spot and ended up in the ditch? Yeah, I used to do that even when, when I rode my bike. As an experiment, I've taken Kevin down the course to show him that on his first run, both signs will be red. I, I, I can see they're, they're both red. So Andrew's given him full disclosure on what's going to happen. Kevin knows what the objective is. Now that he knows he's supposed to stop before the truck, will he stop? We're about to find out. Spoiler alert! Kevin's going to hit the truck. Red, red. Oh. Mm. You've got that look again. What look? That please don't kill me look. This time, Kevin changes lanes without ever doing a right side shoulder check at all. Watch again. Kevin looks over his left shoulder, but when he turns his head the other way, he never takes his eye off the road in front of him. Kevin still can't check his right side blind spot. So I do need more rehab. I know. Before slow Robert goes, I want to give him a fast driving lesson. Well, the fastest I ever driven, it's around 90, 95 kilometers okay. per hour. Right now, we're gonna break that record right now. This is not a challenge, this is just a lesson, okay? All right. Go when you're ready. I remind Robert to look far, far down the road when driving at high speed, and in no time flat, he's going 80 and is still comfortably accelerating. There you go, 80, look at your speed, look at your speed, 90, 100, cruise. Robert cruises at 120 kilometers an hour, casually, wow. until he runs out of room. Slow down, slow down, slow down, there you go, no problem. No problem. That was good. You feel that? Yeah. You went 120. Wow. I didn't notice it. Go whenever you're ready. On the challenge, Robert accidentally goes 90 kilometers an hour, which is too fast for this course. You were going 90. Oh, really? Here he comes. On his second attempt, Robert gets up to 70, he maintains that speed, and he easily sees the green sign to his right. Oh. Okay, here they could. Robert has conquered his speed demons. Oh, that was perfect. When we come back, the experts and I choose this season's first graduate. I got somebody in mind right now. This episode. Canada's worst drivers learned how to properly reverse. They learned where their wheels are. And they learned how to check their blind spot. Now, it's time for the experts and I to decide who this episode's graduate should be. Starting with Flora. Do you want to graduate today? Mm, no. 
<laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> Slow Robert feels he should graduate because he also did a perfect shoulder check after learning how to drive 120 kilometers an hour. I feel like uh, my only issue was the speed and now I can go a little bit faster. And yeah, I think I'm ready to graduate. Margarita doesn't think she should graduate. I don't think so, no. And neither does Azim. Even if you let me graduate, I'd tell you I'd want to stay. In fact, should you graduate this episode? No, 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 no. There isn't one other person here who wants to graduate. I think that I still could use um, more education. I definitely do not deserve to graduate. No, I need a lot more help before I can even think of graduating. Someone has to graduate. We'll pick that person right now. Feels to me like nobody is ready to graduate, yet at the same time, we just can't go through the entire season with eight people here, so. I got somebody in mind right now. Tell me who you got in mind. I think Robert's ready. Philippe thinks Klein is ready. Klein, yeah. Well, he's the only one that passed all the, the challenges. I agree with Philippe. Klein aced the reversing challenge. He followed his mother's advice and got through the trough. Don't turn too tight. There you go. And when he controlled his speed, he did do a successful shoulder check. Those skills aren't enough for Shamala. I'm going to say Robert. Everyone else said that they wanted to stay. He was the only person that seemed like he was ready to graduate. Um, if we've got to pick somebody, I would say him. That's two votes for Robert and two for Klein. Tim, the bad news for you is you're going to be the tiebreaker. Who's going to be your choice to be the graduate this episode? Well, we've reached the end of our second episode here on Canada's Worst Driver Season 8, which means it's time to name our first graduate. Today's vote came down to two people. The fastest guy here and the slowest guy here. So, which one of you is going to get your license back? Well, it's the one of you who said you want your license back. Robert? That's you, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. When we met Robert in Toronto, he drove 50k an hour on the highway. And... Slower is safer. Slower is safer. Slower is safer. He said slower is safer so often... Slower is safer. You'd think he was being paid to say it. Slower is safer! Here in rehab, Robert learned that he was looking too close to his hood to safely be driving at high speed. Now that Robert knows where to look... I don't believe anymore slower is safer. Be careful out there. Don't be afraid to go faster, man. You can do it. Join us next episode when our fleet of precious vehicles gets another molly by Canada's worst drivers. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver... Holy... The nominees are forced to use their mirrors by reversing the school bus. They learn why to never drive distracted. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Oh. Whoa. And on our annual Eye of the Needle course, things go sideways. <laughs> <laughs>